sometimes I wonder what happens on the other side of the Milky Way galaxy. Mm. Is there a young scientist there on the other side of the, of the Milky Way writing down the exact same equations that I'm writing down, but in a different language? And I realize that if this is a theory of everything, it's probably unique, in which case throughout the galaxy, many, many civilizations will come across this. And of, of what use is this equation? This equation takes us beyond Einstein. Einstein's theory is ambivalent on the question of whether or not wormholes can actually exist, whether or not you can build a time machine, whether or not you can zip across the galaxy instantly. Einstein's equations do not have a definitive yes or no on that question. String theory would. In which case, if wormholes are really possible, and they are a type 3 civilization, they would be able to manipulate the Planck energy. The Planck energy is the energy at which space and time become yes. unstable. Now, many people say, well, doesn't that violate the laws of physics? Isn't it nonsense? But at a certain point, the known laws of physics begin to break down. And they break down at the Planck energy, 10 to the 19 billion electron volts. That is a quadrillion times more powerful than our most powerful atom smasher based in Geneva, Switzerland. That is the Planck energy. The Planck energy is the energy at which space becomes unstable, Bubbles begin to form in this space, and these bubbles are gateways, wormholes to other yes. universes. And so we think that a civilization out there, smart enough, advanced enough, would eventually use these things perhaps to zip around the Milky Way galaxy. In principle, you could go faster than the speed of light by zipping through a wormhole. That makes me question UFOs, though, when you say that. And the reason is... UFOs are supposedly these ships that we see that come into our galaxy. There's been alleged crashes and things like that that exist in a way that we assume they have much more power than, say, our rockets or planes, obviously, and things like that. But we can see them. They obviously move to where the human eye has become aware of them if they have, in fact, been sighted, which tells me that that would be almost, in a way, moving microscopically slow for a tier three civilization that has figured out, you know, the relationship with time and light and stuff like that. Why would we ever see anything? Why would there be something like a drone or a Tic Tac or a full-blown UFO ship that comes in if it's coming from a civilization that would almost seem to have something like that considered to be completely in the rear view? Well, any civilization that advanced that can use wormholes to zip across the, the Milky Way galaxy would eventually want to stop and look around and see what's out there. And that's when they would have to have uh, drones, drones that would be then sent to explore these different planets. Now, these drones could be part organic, part mechanical, but they themselves do not need a starship to land on the Earth. They would simply shoot drones which would then land on the planet Earth. So when we finally meet them, <coughs> they could be robotic, they could be part biological, any possibility. But the reason why they're able to reach us to begin with is because they went through a wormhole. That is the only, that we, only way that we know of to go faster than the speed of light. But if they... So you're using a term like drone, though which I guess is just something we've crafted as a term to refer to these flying objects that we put in the sky, but who's to say that they even, like, I, I don't understand why they would have a drone, in air quotes there, that could move slow enough that would allow them to be seen. And maybe, this is another thing I do throw out there as, as someone who does believe in, in the phenomenon and, and what's been going on, but like, you know, just playing devil's advocate, maybe they look at it and they're like, they can simulate these outcomes ahead of time. Maybe they're, maybe we're this rich experiment for them just to see how we respond to certain impedi or impetuses, whatever it is, and things like that in the sense that, okay, I'm an alien civilization. I've, I'm exploring Earth. Let's let them see one. Let's see how they respond to that. Let's see what, what, how the human mind freaks out to that or denies it or accepts it or whatever. Do you think that maybe that is the reason why we're able to, quote-unquote, see these things? I think it's simpler than that. I think that as they explore outer space, they send drones out there. And if you saw the movie 2001, 
The movie 2001, mm. I think, gives you a pretty accurate uh, portrayal of how it would actually happen, that they would put a probe on the moon. Why the moon? Because the moon has no friction, no erosion. Things are stable for billions of years. And it's a listening post, a listening post where they can scan the solar system to see what life forms can exist. And then once in a while, they would land on the planet to you know, have close-up views of what's happening there. And the other thing about the movie 2001 is that these drones self-replicate. Toward the end of the movie, you saw thousands of these drones surrounding Jupiter. That's important because how do you colonize the universe? If you put a drone on the moon and makes copies of itself, these are called von Neumann probes. Von Neumann probes are probes that make copies of themselves and shoot out to the next generation of planets. They then colonize those planets and shoot out once again. So with one probe, you have two. With two probes, you have four, eight, 16, 32, 64, 128 probes until you have a sphere a sphere of billions of probes expanding near the speed of light or perhaps even superluminal velocities colonizing the galaxy. That is the most mathematically efficient way to explore the universe. Forget the Enterprise and Star Trek. The Enterprise goes from hopping from planet to planet to planet. That is the, the, the most inefficient way to explore the galaxy. The most efficient way to explore the galaxy was von Neumann probes that land on moons, make copies of themselves, they shoot out. And where have you seen that before? That's a virus. Mm. That's exactly what viruses do. Viruses land on a cell, use the hijack the machinery, create copies of themselves that shoot out, they make more copies of themselves. That's the most mathematically efficient way to colonize the Milky Way galaxy. And that's what an advanced civilization would do because you only have to make the first probe. <laughs> Once you make the first probe, like a virus, it just self-replicates all by itself. Okay? That is the most efficient way to conquer the galaxy. And why haven't they looked at it as a foreign object in this way? Why haven't they looked to, like, destroy us that we know of, <laughs> like, overtly? Well, well, if you're going down a country road and you see a squirrel... Do you go down to the squirrel and say, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to torture you, I'm going to skin you, I'm going to put you on a, on a roaster at home? Or you simply try to talk to it. And after a while, you get kind of bored because the squirrel doesn't talk back to you, and you just simply keep on going. So I would imagine that to them, we're not, nothing but, but forest animals, squirrels, mice, rabbits. And they initially want to make contact with us, but eventually they get bored because we have... <laughs> What do we have to offer them? Rap music? I mean, what are we going <laughs> to use to entice these aliens to give us their advanced technology? No. The danger is that we could be in their way. That's the real danger. Because if we're in their way, what do we do when animals are in our way? We remove them. Right. We colonize it. We put a shopping mall. Put a shopping mall where the forest used to be. That is a real danger. <laughs> because... They may not want to conquer us because what do we have to offer? Gold? Silver? Uh, no, we have nothing to offer them, okay? So they would pretty much leave us alone. If they want gold or minerals and stuff like that, they can go to Mars, uh, which is uninhabited, we think, and has plenty of minerals. And so if they need mat materials, there are other planets to plunder than Earth. So I think for the most part, they would c consider us a curiosity analyze us with drones and leave us alone and that's exactly what we we see now thank you for watching the video guys please hit that subscribe button and check out this clip's full podcast episode by clicking here or in the description below